I'll hear this. Good evening and welcome to the Georgetown School Committee meeting of Thursday, July 31st. If we could please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, just so you know, uh, Superintendent Jacobs is not at the meeting this evening, but Joan Laporta was here. So I'm sure you'll be able to answer any questions that so. we may have. <laughs> this is the first um, school committee meeting that Carol has not been at, which In I think is pretty years impressive. Of service yeah. In yeah. Church yeah. Ten years. So Seven. that. Was, Seven years. Yeah. That's pretty good. Ten. Okay, Seven. we have a pretty packed agenda for this evening, so I just wanted to start off with the consent agenda. Um, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve regular session minutes of June 26, 2014, safety session minutes of April 10, 2014, safety session minutes of May 8, 2014, governance minutes of June 12, 2014, as well as uh, warrant, acceptance of warrants number 01V15, number 03V15, 05 v 15 02 p 15 and 04 p 15 so moved second any discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. thank you okay i hope you had an opportunity to look at the baker adams thank you letters that we received yes. from the graduating seniors yes. which was nice that they took the time to do that yes. Very nice. um Okay, public comment. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to address the committee? Come on up, Mike. Uh, first, I'd like to like to thank the school committee for giving me an opportunity to uh, uh, address a, a pending subject I think is going to be addressed during next month's school committee meeting. Um, but unfortunately, I won't be at that meeting. Um, I think most of you know I'm usually here in the capacity of vice president of the Georgetown Education Association. Um, but unfortunately, I won't, I won't be at next month's meeting. Uh, so um, the reason why I wanted to address the school committee um, as well as the public is regarding a business relationship currently maintained by the district. Um, first, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Michael Murphy. I am a Georgetown High School English teacher, and I'm proud to say I'm going to be starting my 14th year in the fall. Um, tonight, I'm not only, as I mentioned, uh, a town employee, but representing the, the GEA as vice president. The topic I'd like to address is Georgetown's business relationship with Gordon College. Uh, I believe this may be an agenda item, as I mentioned, um, but I just wanted to establish the groundwork for dialogue. Uh, I contacted Superintendent Jacobs on Monday, July 7th to discuss Gordon College President D. Michael Lindsay's request for exemption to hiring rule. President Lindsay, along with a faith-based coalition, requested that the Obama administration's pending legislation regarding non-discriminatory hiring practices not apply to them based on their beliefs, particularly regarding the LGBT community. Their request was denied, and as a result, this local story has become national news. Uh, since my first communication with Superintendent Jacobs, the City of Salem and the PBD Essex Museum have dissolved uh, business relations with Gordon College, and the City of Lynn's relationship is also pending. Georgetown currently hosts Gordon classes at the high school, as well as fosters student teaching opportunities for their undergraduate students. So on behalf of the GEA, I am formally requesting that these business ties be terminated based on the grounds or of their discriminatory practices. Uh, President Lindsay's request not only runs contrary to the Georgetown mission statement, soon to be core values and beliefs, uh, but is seen as unjust by both homosexual and heterosexual GEA members. As I stated in my correspondence with Superintendent Jacobs, the GEA isn't telling anyone how to think. Moral decisions are left to the individual. However, when private faith-based businesses with discriminatory policies 
have relationships with the public sector, it becomes a public matter. So what do business ties with businesses who discriminate say about our district? I have family, friends, colleagues, students, parents, and mentors who I couldn't look in the eye if I didn't address this issue tonight. The GEA encourages all people to practice their faith and however when someone's belief infringes upon the rights of others it becomes unjust. Uh, if all of you would be willing to take the time to consider the GEA's request this evening and throughout the coming weeks, uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, hopefully, um, a timely conclusion can be reached um, within that time. I'd be happy to answer any questions um, or entertain a discussion um, at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone from the committee want to discuss? this topic at this point? It's a lot to take in, you know, and I, I, I really don't expect anyone to really get into a whole thing. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to lay the groundwork, but it's, like I said, it's open to you. Can I just ask you to clarify a little bit about what the GEA is asking? Are you, are you asking that the Georgetown Public School District, that we um, just alter our hiring practices regarding no no not, not at all no not, not at all not at all not we've what you're saying. I think our, our district has benefited greatly from Gordon College uh, we have a, a number of faculty members who are from Gordon um, and we've had a very good business relationship with them and um, that's not to say that uh, you know future hires or um, you know wouldn't be accepted we're not saying that at all right um, but what we, what we are requesting is just strictly, you know, when you take, um, you know, the college component, the education, we're talking about business to business. Uh, we are requesting that those business ties be terminated based on their practices. Do you know how many other area colleges we have similar business arrangements with? I don't. Uh, and I know that one of the concerns, it, we have established a nice program. It's almost like a feeder program where we have student teachers come in and some of those student teachers have gone on to be full-time teachers at Georgetown. So it's been a nice relationship. Um, I don't know what other schools have similar ties, um, but you know, th this may be an opportunity to maybe open up similar relationships with Salem State or, or Endicott or you know, Merrimack. I, you know, I don't know off the top of my head what their education programs are like. Um, but it could be an opportunity for something else. I think that would be one thing. I just would love to have more information about the history of our relationship with Gordon College and how we entered into that relationship. Why Gordon over other area colleges? That's, right. You may not know that. The superintendent may not know that, or may or may not, but I think that would be an interesting thing as we consider you know, what our, how to respond to this. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, kind of definitely that's why I said it, you know, to give everyone the opportunity to get all the details sure, yeah. uh, and more pieces to the puzzle would kind of make it just make more sense for everyone. Right. So I know this isn't, you know, a snap decision and you know, bang the gavel and it's done. It's clearly you need time to think about something like this. So have other um have other of your colleagues approached you about this? So is this uh there have been some uh who have uh, expressed um, concern? Um, obviously, they'll you know will remain anonymous. Sure, of course. Um, but you know, I you know I, I feel I feel for everyone involved. I mean, they're great students at Gordon, at Gordon currently. Uh, they're faculty uh, alumni who have expressed um, you know their concern over the situation publicly on the internet and saying listen this doesn't reflect all of us and it doesn't you know so um, you know we're not in the interest of uh, you know somehow laying consequences on people who don't deserve them you no, know? I understand though it's an institution that's operating as a business and I understand where that comes from right by severing our relationship like how many individuals does it impact or does it not impact? I well, assume it impacts. Well, I think it would, meaning the, the classes that are hosted, they would discontinue. Um, so, right, Gordon, so right Gordon now Gordon it's like a satellite, find. Georgetown is like a satellite Correct. Um, classroom for them. Right. Yeah. So some classes are held within the faculty room of the Georgetown High School. 
Uh, in addition, um, and this is why I, I want to try to pursue this as soon as I sure. read about it, because I'm also thinking about current students. I, we've all been students, and you know, quite often your credits are, are based on student teaching opportunities. Sure. So I, I'd feel awful if there were students who were relying or, or their Gordon students who were Gordon, relying right. on a teaching right relying on us and yeah. all of a sudden they find out at the you know 11th hour right. that their opportunity isn't available right um, you know so I think in the in this process if there was a way of you know maybe uh, you know kind of helping them it, again it, it just depends on what the conclusion is Absolutely. but you know Absolutely. but I, I wouldn't want to leave students kind of in the lurch because that's it's unprofessional and um, but it's an unfortunate right. byproduct of the decisions and leadership of Gordon College right now and I mean a possible solution you know maybe a little more complicated for instance I mean we could grandfather in anybody who already has an existing tie and potentially you know look at, at students student teachers who wanted to come in the future and say something about that but now so this the relationship so we've got hosting classes, we've got student teaching. Is there any other aspect of the relationship that concerns you or, or I mean? To my knowledge, it's it. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I know that courses are offered uh, that current GE members take there. I don't know if, if there's a rate reduction or. Student discount. Yeah, and I don't know if, do you know the answer I to think that, that I, With my understanding, it is that they do receive a discount. Right. Georgetown teachers exactly right. yeah yeah right. off of tuition that Georgetown Correct. public schools pays or that the teachers themselves pay teachers themselves. So, so is it between the college and the teachers does it really involve it, that does not involve the district right but we're, but they are employed here yeah. right they are employed here but like this benefit is their that, school right, right. like so a benefit because they are our teachers right. That, and they can and do it right on site and generally listen we're not in the interest of taking away benefits from any of our teachers um, <clears throat> Sometimes you have to make tough decisions, you know, and uh, yeah, you know, stand so. up for what your beliefs right. are when to stand up against discrimination. I think right. is at some point like that's a worthy thing to do. If that's now, my just uh, a question that I have for you as the vice president of the GEA. How many people are you actually speaking on behalf of? Well, again. To give you a formal number, you know, we could, the GA could put out a communication mm -hmm. and poll our members in this matter. Um, informally, there's a handful. Okay. Um, but for all we know, there, there may be more. Um, I mean, it's I, been a pretty hot topic. Right. Right, and I, I wish I, could, I wish I can give you a specific, you know, because quite, quite I'm not here I, at while I represent the GEA. Mm -hmm. There are probably GEA members who don't feel the same way, sure. but what we're trying to focus on is more of the hiring practices, mm -hmm. and we're trying to, you know, kind of, it, it, because in, in this whole thing the waters get very muddied very quickly, um, and I think if we focus solely on discriminatory hiring practices, it kind of makes it more of a black and white issue as opposed to what's right what's wrong what's just what's unjust you know that kind of thing um, you know if if that's something that would help you in your, in your decision be more than happy to put out a communication to members to you know informally poll and um, you know I mean it might be helpful to know you know what majority of teachers right. how they feel since it it would impact them. Well, as a whole not, I, well I, I'm just thinking that I think if that it's a GEA issue, I would think that the membership would be the ones that would say, yes, we would like you to go forth proceed. with this. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I, that's I, why I'm, I'm just questioning. However, there, so. there have been certain issues that have legal ramifications mm -hmm. that almost regardless of membership, the GEA pushes forth. So, you know, again, like I said, I could try to um, give you more feedback and encourage members, you know, if, if this becomes an agenda item for the August 28th meeting, 
Um, if you, you know, if, if there would be members who would want to speak and you'd like to hear from them, we could arrange that. Um, I'm sure that there'd be, you know, members of the community um, who would probably want to speak on behalf of this as well. Um, you know, I, I don't want to kick a hornet's nest and then take off on everybody here, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's something that it's worth addressing. And you would like something done prior to the beginning of the school year? Well, ideally. So on the 28th, when we have it as an agenda item, you would like it at that point to be decided as to how we'll go forward with it? Ideally, that would be good. Uh, but like I said, we're open. We're, you know, we're open to, I think the relationship the GEA has had with Superintendent Jacobs has been very strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, the communication um, has been a strong point. Um, you know, Pam, you, you mentioned the idea of phasing things out. You know, I mean, does something have to happen, you know, does the Band-Aid have to be ripped off quickly? Sometimes it's best, sometimes it's not, you know, so maybe that's something that is discussed and, um, you know, sometimes an amicable break might be best for everyone. Now, is a representative from the GEA uh, planning on attending next month? Yes, yes, the, the president of GEA, Joe Patello, will oh, be good. here, yeah, okay. and uh, like I said, if, uh, if you would like to have GEA members uh, voice their opinions, um, we could arrange that. And um, I think that's pretty much what I want to address tonight. Yeah, I don't. They don't have to attend. Have to attend. If they want to shoot me an email, I'll be more than happy to take a look at their email. But I think it's relatively uh, an easy process for you to poll them. Right. So I would like to get a number, if you wouldn't mind yeah. Yeah, doing that, do that, just so I can have an idea. Right. informally at a meeting you know, raise the topic and see what the res general response is and it's tough in the summer I mean I, I know that I check my my email uh, but you know most people are connected and you know via social media and things like that um, so it, it it wouldn't be hard you know but I, I do hear you on on policy too and sometimes it's it's a matter of right and wrong and legal and right you know yeah I would be more interested in understanding how many individuals are impacted to get to the whole issue that PM mentioned about, you know, a phasing approach to this. Right. Personally, I mean, if you poll, that's fine. I wouldn't want to be influenced, though, by those numbers. To me, it's about doing the right thing. Thank you. Th and that's just my yeah. own personal opinion. Yeah, I appreciate You know, I no disrespect that. to anyone, but yeah. I wouldn't want to be influenced by polling personally. Right. I, I, I but, appreciate that because it, it is true. I mean, if it's one, you know, I mean, we have, I think, uh, nearly 130 members in the in the district or something like that um, you know and, and some people might say well only one person's impacted or you know whatever it may be but I, like you said when it gets into um, an issue of right and wrong mm -hmm. um, you know sometimes you have to draw a line in the sand and do what's right you know so I think this is one of those moments I, I concur with that as well it's I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just trying to look at all angles of the of the issue. Right. And I right. and I know it's complicated, you know. I, mm -hmm. uh, you know, particularly, um, you know, what's the fallout of this? Um, you know, what does it say about future business relations and things like that? And, and it, it's it's a, it's been a good business relationship, uh, and you know, until this this uh, incident. Um, you know, maybe in the future there could be. Uh, a change in leadership at Gordon or uh, change in leadership policies and maybe that can be something that kind of bridges this gap you know so um, but I think at least for tonight and I, again I really sincerely because this wasn't an agenda item and I know that sometimes um, uh, you know issues that are brought forth from the public um, could turn into something much larger so uh, I just appreciate everyone's li listening and giving me the time, and uh, I hope you take the time to think about it. And like I said, if you need to contact me in the meantime, I could always shoot everyone an email, and uh, I'll do what I can at least to furnish you with some information regarding your membership. Great. No, I do think it's a uh, topic that we would definitely want to look into. I um, appreciate like I said, your hot, It's a hot, it's a hot, hot button yes. right now yeah. when you're looking at it, and I spent the last week looking at every you know aspect of it, the people that are you know, for it, the people that are, you know, standing behind them, and it's, it's definitely, 
Uh, Please tell us what I have no idea. I have a hot pot issue. I have a hard word. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, give, give me the. Yeah, there, there is the, the the Obama administration was was uh, trying to pass legislation essentially um, regarding hiring practices, non-discriminatory hiring practices. Um, there was a letter that was sent to the Obama administration, and it was from mostly faith-based organizations, but included in that was uh, President Lindsay of Gordon College. He was also signing that letter. And they were asking, in this letter, they were asking for exemption from this legislation because of their beliefs and their faith. So, so they, want, they want to be able to discriminate to be, in their right. hiring practices I guess my question, against people who do not follow the faith. To well, your, yes. From your opening, did you said that was denied, though, if I understand? It was. So I guess my question right. is, does that sort of, I don't want to say solve the issue, it's not that easy, but what what issue was remaining if they if their exemption was denied they asked to do something and they were told that they're not allowed well the 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 issue i think is this the president since that since that time has backtracked a bit but hasn't necessarily backed down from his position so this is a business that essentially is saying um there are certain lifestyles, there are certain things that we see is immoral, unfit, we don't condone. That's not something that Georgetown, it's I mean. It's going to punish the student teachers is what's going to happen out of that. That's all that's going to happen. But the thing is, it's, it's not us punishing. It, this is the consequences for their actions. It's. Did he sign it as the president of Gordon College or as an individual? President of Gordon College. President of Gordon College. Yeah. So, and people would say that. It's like, listen, we don't, we don't want to punish, you know, people who are just trying to get their education. And think, this is an unfortunate byproduct of the president's actions. So Gordon College is asking all of their, all of their employees and all of their students to sign a code of conduct that has nothing really to do with their job performance or their performance as a student or anything they carry out professionally within the college, it's their life lifestyle. Right. That's what's that's that's what's happening. It's the right of Gordon College to do that. It's a it's it's a religious freedom issue, it sounds like what it's coming down to. I mean it's there But you you can have and that's the point I was making. You could everyone could have religious freedoms. But when those religious freedoms start to fall into the public sector Yeah but it's not. It's only gonna impact their school. It shouldn't impact, it's not impacting our school's policy. Other than you want to punish the students, that the students. But by that Georgetown maintaining a relationship with this institution, we're condoning their practices. We're saying, yeah, go ahead and do that. We don't care. But Georgetown has relationships with many institutions. That's yeah, what well, I. What if you hire someone from Brandeis or BU or, I mean, you know, that's, those, that, that, those all these institutions that support have, things that not everybody agrees with. But those are not colleges that have asked to be exempt from. No, but their policies are offensive to others in many cases. I. I, I would I would beg to disagree with you on that. Well, they are. So you can, you I have an opinion, but I think for me, I, I would ask if you have a group of people take a vote. I, I mean, you don't want to hear polls, but if you're representing that group, do a petition. Then then you have people that believe in what you say, and, and then then bring it to the school. I, I wouldn't if I was in an organization like a union. I wouldn't want someone speaking for me unless I had a chance to sign yes or no. You sign yes or no. And, and you might be right. Maybe you just don't do business with Gordon. But if I was sitting in that position, I would say, OK, pull your 180 people. That takes half an hour. You can do a petition. Yes or no. You in or you out. Send it in. Give it to them. Well, let me put a, a well, I don't want, I don't want to make this a big yeah. discussion. Right, can, and that's, that's what I was kind of worried about. So that's OK. It, 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 I would appreciate, though, the numbers. Right. Just because I used to be a union employee, I remember people getting upset saying, wait a minute, you're not talking for me right. because I don't feel that way. So I just want to get an idea. And I don't think it's going to take a long time, you know, summer or not. I don't think it's going to take a long time, especially if, you know, word of mouth through the teachers, if they're really passionate about it either way. Right. Because this is a pretty important uh, step that you would like 
Georgetown as a community to take. Sure. You know, and, and I, I want the committee to really see um, the good, the bad. I, I want them to see everything surrounding it. And I, I really think that it's a, <coughs> it's a much bigger issue than maybe we can fix. Um, but on the 28th, I definitely, it will be on the agenda. Um, if anyone wants to send me an email, you know, I'd love to read their emails either way. Yeah. And um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, I'll try to keep in correspondence with everyone in the meantime, <laughs> just to let you know, so this is what I've sent out, and this is right. kind of like preliminary results, or, you know, so far, this is, you know, so I'll give you some feedback. Um, okay. And then... And then know, Joe will be here on the 28th. Joe will be here on the 28th. Okay. So, okay. Again, That's thank good. you, okay. everyone, for your time. Yeah, really we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are going to talk now with uh, John Pingree and Mark Perry about the turf field. <laughs> You're here to talk about the use agreement and the donation agreement. <laughs> right. Well, I, I hope everybody has yep. them in their package. I mean, they've been worked over by pretty much everybody. <laughs> so uh, basically what it is is the donation agreement is the commitment of the GAA to donate I made a copy. We have a check in there, but this is the, the amount of the check. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's what we're going to donate to the town of Georgetown. It's four hundred and forty-five thousand, two hundred and seventy-two dollars for the, basically for the installation and the purchase of the turf, the turf itself. Um, in the donation agreement, and there's going to be, there might be some other stuff. We actually might be doing a trust agreement also. But the town may want a trust agreement for the future um, donation of how we're going to replace the turf in 10 to 15 years. So I have a copy of that if you guys want to read a preliminary thing. It has not been looked at by Mike Farrell yet because he's on vacation. I've had it at his office for three or four days now. So I have no, no feedback on the trust agreement. But everybody's looked at the donation agreement and the field use agreement. The, the donation field, agreement says you will set up the trust account. It says it in there? Yes. Okay. So that's this. But it hasn't been... It's only been, it's been written by an attorney and it hasn't been reviewed by okay. Mike Farrell because he's not back until okay. whatever that date is. Right, but and then the Board of Selectmen is supposed to, uh, on Monday's meeting, August 4th. So hopefully before August 4th he'll have the opportunity to review. I don't know when he's review. back. I mean, he's, he's back Monday. He'll be okay. back Monday. So, so hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to look at it before then. Monday night. Monday. <laughs> yeah, so he's back Monday. Hopefully by Monday night they'll have well, looked at this and... These are on the agenda for their meeting. So he'll yeah. Have yeah, but the trust agreement is the one that is going to, you know, they got to look through a little bit more. So basically, well, it's just okay to up. say you're going to set up the trust and then. Well, it's already set up on our side, but, terms of the you know, I'm not sure how it's, you know, whether, I mean, it's just all lawyer stuff at this, it, nothing that you or me or anybody else right. cares about. Right. Our point is that in 10 to 15 years, we're going to have enough money in an account. I'll give you the basic. We're going to have enough money in an account to replace that field That's at the town's discretion. If we went under for whatever reason, any money left in that trust would go to the town for okay. the replacement of that turf field. Okay. Now the reason we have to set that up is because it's a long story, but the short and the long of it is the town could not put it in an interest bearing account. Right. Okay. So if we gave them the money and it was say we put in fifty thousand more, they could not give us back the money. Right. And I'm like, well, if we're short, you're gonna send me the bill, right? And he goes, Oh yeah. I said, Well, if we have too much, you're not gonna give me it back? He said, No. I said, well, that's not fair. So Absolutely. we had to go through a lot of gyrations to come to this, okay. where we are with this trust agreement. But it basically, it's just a... No, and also the town agreement. didn't want GAA as the trustee. So John and myself and three others will be trustees, will meet through the savings bank. Okay. And we'll be tied to the process through... Yeah, we thought we were going to get done with this and, you know. So you're saying they didn't want the organization as a whole to be it, so the individuals, five individuals are going well, to be? there's got to be some accountability. Right. So okay. actually, you, Mark and I are going to be the two trustees. We're going to be on this project for 15 more years. Is <laughs> okay. what that's telling me. So they're not letting you go? No. <laughs> so who would the more other? More or less we raise the $450,000 quicker. <laughs> <laughs> who, would the other three? Chain, right? <laughs> who would the other three that you would uh, be? We have well, what it is is we're the two trustees, and then you have the, the committee is, is going to be the board of directors, board of directors uh, right. and the, all the members of the, um, the GAA. So you have the basketball director, the oh. football director. So you have five directors. You have the executive board, the vice president, chairman, president, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. There's mm -hmm. four. You have the five people that are football, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, softball, 
they're all directors. So you have nine people that form the committee. Mm -hmm. And then Mark and I are the trustees. And then so what happens is each year money gets put into this and we are sure that this is going to happen, but the committee basically directs everything that's going to happen. So it's kind of just a check and a balance of how it's all going to be set up. Mm -hmm. But for the town's purposes, they, they're concerned that, you know, we show an accounting each year that X amount of money is going in there and that if something happens that they would get any money that's left over in there. It specifically states that it can be used for no other purpose mm -hmm. other yeah. than for the, the purchase of, the repurchase of that turf field and mm -hmm. whenever the town deems that it needs to be replaced. So, they have uh, I'm sorry? There's a fund to go to. For right, that. there's yeah. a fund to go to. So if everything goes well, I'm hoping that we'll have that thing fully funded in 10 or 11 years and that you know, the field lasts 12 to 15 years. We get a few extra years in there. If it doesn't, then, you know, we'll make it happen, whatever has to be. We don't have a vendor yet for the turf? Yeah, well, let me, let me get to that, too. Okay, so how long is their warranty? 10 years. Theirs is 10. There's a 10-year warranty on the field, right. Okay, and so if anything happens prior to the 10, th they would, they they would, would come that. and take it. Right. right, so but what ended up happening in this whole transition, Joan and I were talking about it earlier, but um, originally, the part of the GAA's deal was we were going to be able to buy the turf and install it outside of the town. Mm -hmm. For another long story I don't need to tell you about, we weren't able to do that due to liability reasons. Um, so we ended up having to make the turf purchase part of the whole public bid process, which happened. What it basically is short and long is it costs us $45,000 at GAA. It costs us $45,000 more to do it that way. And we lost the ability to choose the company that we would have wanted. At the end of the day, it is what it is. We had to get it done. So that's where it is. And we got a check for $445,272 to buy the, the first field turf as it is. But that cuts into our ability to purchase those extra lights and, and different things that, you know, Did you just find this out today? No, no this okay. was a week, a week, two weeks ago. So this, so yeah. during the public bid, we knew that. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. all put in back. Yeah. That's why it was bid. delayed till Friday. She had to send out an addendum. Oh, I didn't know had, why it was delayed. I just right. yeah. they had to add that, that as got. part of the project. So the public oh. bid I didn't now know you lost that covers the construction. Right. Uh, excuse me, the removal of the the arsenic. Yeah. That's one part of it. By the same, the construction, install purchase and installation of turf. Now it's all one. Before it would have been, it could have been broken up into multiple pieces. I didn't know though the the cost. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at the way I mean, I they the give you a spreadsheet process. and they actually, they I didn't look at this one, but they broke it down with each guy's yeah. bid. And yeah. if you look at the low bidder on the turf, it was probably right around four hundred thousand. And this guy that actually got the job was the highest one on the turf. On the turf, yeah. yeah. We, we, so, so our portion of it went from the lowest to the highest, basically, mm -hmm. as the way it went. But this guy's his soil removal and every other aspect. He was well below everybody else, so he was able to come in lower. So it didn't help our organization, per se, but it helped the bid process. And he was the only one that was within the bid. Joan was about to have a stroke for my information. So. Well, and the first bid they opened was over $2 million. Oh. Yeah, we both looked at each other. It was $2.2 million. Yeah. Dollars, or that was the high end, and we were like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. They know what they're bidding on. Uh -huh. I know, yeah. yeah. So okay. it would... But it went it's well. It's just an imperfect science, and it you know we well were, you know, hoping. That, and this guy is a local guy. He's only two miles away, so he has no transportation costs and a lot of other stuff. And I, I'm thinking that it's actually a good. Yeah, thing he's on you have a local Street. vendor. Oh, I think that's um, nice. So Excellent. you know he's gonna, you yeah. know, he could do it cheaper than somebody driving up from the South Shore sure. that has to drive all their guys up all the time. They got to pay the gas. They got the transportation costs. They got all that moving the equipment. He doesn't have all those costs. So mm -hmm. um, plus know, for him, he wants to have a place in town. Shows his work. Yeah, yep, absolutely. That's for us. That's for him. So all that is. Um, so I think we're pretty much everything's where it should be, except just finalizing the details on the trust agreement. That's Mike, that's the okay. only thing. And I'm hoping when Mike gets back on Monday that that is all ironed out before, uh, because we really need to get going. Like yesterday. Yesterday, <laughs> honestly, we, the the bid calls for November twentieth timeline to, for, them, for them to complete the project. So they really need to start by, you know, they can push it back if they wanted to, but that just, you know, yeah. they're obligated to finish that project by yeah. November 20th. So we actually don't want them to push it back because we have other things that are falling in line here too. We're actually taking 
some of the, the loom from the high school project, they're going to sell it to the Pembroke project. They have to buy uh, like 4,000 yards of loom, and then they're 15 to 20 bucks a yard, and we can get it to them probably cheaper than anybody else can get it to them. So now I know in your email earlier to me, you quoted like 80,000. I was thinking it's like 60. It's yeah. 50, well, it's 15 to 20. I don't know. Right. So it's probably okay. going mean, to be 60. So it could be 60. A great, okay. So it's 60 to 80 is probably going to be the number. I that talked to Pete Turkey and right. Mike Anderson yeah. today. The only thing that, in order to do it, that, that they're gonna, they sent it out for testing. The only thing it has to be able to do is grow grass. So when they send it out, it has to be able to grow grass. And, and we know it can so grow grass. It's been I mean, growing grass. So that, <laughs> that's not the problem. I mean, you saw the thing in the back, you know, the contingency. And I, when I wrote to, to Lindsay, I can't remember, Thursday or Friday, we've had so much correspondence here, that I, I believe that money has to go on to the contingency money. It can't be planned, and hopefully that'll yeah, bridge the, that gap. Right. The so only normally, we, normally they ask that there's a 10% contingency. They want 7 we, to 10% contingency. Right, and we have 3%. Three. Well, the problem is, so, see, we're at 30% on the, on the soil removal aspect of it. We have a 30% contingency there. And then because he came in really low with the excavating costs, mm -hmm. and then we're tight on some of these other areas. So our engineers are concerned that we don't have the contingency that we need, but if we sell this soil and we get $60,000, now all of a sudden we go from a 3% contingency to a, a 6 or 7% contingency, and they're much more comfortable. Yeah. And the contingency are for un unforeseen things that and happen. As you had said, we have tested this soil we're hoping that <laughs> there isn't going to be anything. We've done about 50 done. holes out there. Right. I mean, there's been borings into the five hill. Years. There's been, yeah. you know, so our hopefully. engineering costs have gone up because of all the extra soil testing that we've had to do, all the borings, all the changes in the stuff because of some of this stuff that, you know, Barbie knows. It's just been yeah. one, one problem after another that, you know, that has to have been handled. All you wanted to do was give us a deal. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we're, we're, we're one more meeting away. We got to agree to the bottom It project. sounded like such a simple process. Raise some money, <laughs> give the down a deal. It's not that simple. Yeah. You would think, though. So I, I guess I'm not even sure what we're asking for, Bobby, but you, I guess your approval to go forward with the. Yes. Well, the you know, I just want to. I just want to say it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it again, that. To see a $455,000 donation from an organization that I am proud to have in this town because all my kids have benefited from GAA. They're, they're amazing between the coaches, the you know what you guys do, because I know how, how much time it takes to organize everybody that works for you without getting paid. <laughs> but you know what I mean? You have a huge group of people that are committed to this organization, which is why when people say, well, you never know, it could, it could disintegrate. You know, I'm saying there's way too many people in this town that would prevent that from happening. It benefits many, many. many it really people. does. I mean, there are a lot of grateful yeah. families and, and kids. Well, there's in a this lot of people involved, and, and you have to. When we started taking registration money um, into this capital fund, because uh, I, I, I kind of gauge everything by his son. So his son is going to be a sophomore in college, right? So he, his, some of his first GA money is in that fund. So there's a lot of families that have gone through this yeah. process, but on the other side of it, you know, maybe if their families like him and I, they'll come back or stay in this town, and their kids will use it. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> there's been a lot come. of people over the span the uh, to get to this. And what we really need is the people to keep supporting the organization by participating. You know, we, we want the numbers to increase, you know, so we're always looking to get more kids in and less kids sitting in front of their computers and playing video games. We want them outside. Right, and, absolutely. you know, socializing and playing with their friends, you know. It's, it's too much of, you know, I watch my kids when he was growing up, I'm like, you know, turn that thing off. Let's go, you know. Yeah, it's it's got to be, you know, and it's just getting worse. Yeah. So the parents have really got to stay on top of it and get the kids out there exercising and, you know, and, and interacting with their with their peers. Mm -hmm. and learning good sportsmanship. And That's right. Fun and exercise, and yeah, that, it's, it's, it's a the, wonderful experience. It is. It's a whole project, and it's such a community thing. If people want to come to town and meet other people, there's no better place than to be standing around on some little sporting event. There, 
little soccer game and the kids are all out there running around, you're standing next to them. That's how you meet people. Yeah. The schools I've and the people for years and years and That's years. where the rumors start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would we do without it? I'm going to find out because I'm on the other side of it. It's no <laughs> fun. It's no fun on the other side because I'm already there. It's no good. Okay. You know, you know, I love it. It's a community. It's a community. It we all get to know each other, is. support each other, learn to love each it's other. It's nowhere near as much fun on the other side when your kids are gone. It's not as much fun at all. I mean, yeah. I'd much rather be back coaching it. And, you know, instead of being at the administrative level here, you know, I'd rather be back on the ground floor level and coaching and being with the kids and stuff like that, because that's way more fun. Yeah. Way more fun. No, I do. I agree with you there. <laughs> well, before we can, ex we can um, approve the donation, mm -hmm. we have to talk about the field use. Okay. So yeah. as long as, if you've had an opportunity to take a look at that, which it looks like you were working with um, the athletic director, Sir yeah, Chris Carol, Heddle. Yeah, the athletic yeah. director and I have gone over that agreement uh, yeah. ad nauseum. Yeah. And so the only thing that I hi highlighted in here that I wanted to ask you, so yeah. in the fourth paragraph where it talked about the rental, yes. it says the discretion of the Georgetown Public Schools with the proceeds of those rentals going to maintenance of the turf field and of other natural grass fields. Yeah. So um, that will go into like a separate account or maintenance? The, well, we have an account already and it goes into the facility use account. Okay. Um, so if they use a, the auditorium or people use the fields, so the only difference will be that uh, Mike Anderson will track what money he takes in for field usage. And okay. It will only That's be spent on the, um, the field. Okay. The field. So it That's really is a good opportunity here out. if the school wants to do it to rent that facility out in the summertime, especially for Camp. you know Camp. night Camp. leagues yeah. and, and different things like that. I mean soccer, baseball, softball. I mean all that stuff. If you want to do it during the school year, it'll be tough because the schools will be using it, the GA will be using it, but the summer. Summer times would definitely. A lot of summer programs. Yeah, Plus, yeah, I had talked to Mike about it a couple of weeks ago. You know, some summers they have budget money to be able to hire maintenance staff, mm -hmm. and some summers it gets really tight for them. So, you know, if you rent that field out somewhat, you know, that could pay for your maintenance, you know, your summer maintenance staffs, sure. and, yeah, you know, yeah, to do, it. you know, to. And improving the fields yeah, and maintaining exactly. the fields. Those fields. Well, that's one of the things Carol really wanted, work. which isn't a bad idea. This field's not going to take a lot of maintenance. But all our other fields yes. need a lot yes. of maintenance. Well, it'll so free up Mike, down, and it will. We've talked about this. Not only free him up, but also save money yeah. right. for the school. Right. Well, there's no with bowling, this. no fertilizing, yeah. no watering, no you know, lining. All that stuff, no lining. We'll make up for it with all the new Pembroke fields. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is exactly why we need this money to go. Yeah, that, would, right, that would be for helpful. the fields to the fields. Right. No, I thought the field. I thought the field use agreement was. I was like, wow, you came very generous. I think with the time. That's about the fifth version of it, but yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, it's it's a fair agreement. The structure. Our our, our guys, you know, Bob Frost, Jeff Moore, all these guys met with Chris. They all got their lacrosse points across, mm -hmm. their soccer points across. He was fair. He understands. Um, so what we really want to do is a Friday night thing. Is where we don't we don't take the field on Friday nights. We're hoping that the, the high school schedules games and we do things at halftime right. or in between, you know, the halves so of like the lacrosse games or the soccer games. So you know, the Friday night lights and maybe it'll build a community thing a little bit. That's always what yeah. our hope was mm -hmm. that we could connect the GAA program to the high school program a little bit better. So that one, the high school will have more fans down there because now everybody's bringing the little kids down to to play at the half and you know go run around out there for 20 minutes. And then, you know, maybe they'll stay and watch the, you know, some of the older kids play. So, you know, that kind of connection is what we, we're hoping would happen with that Friday night idea anyway. Great. Yeah, bring the flag football. I remember that was a big exactly. thing if they wore yeah. their jerseys. Yeah, if you go to a North free. Andover home football yeah. game, yeah, they have flag football, you know, before and after. And it brings two or three hundred kids. And here in Georgetown, we talked about if you had two or three hundred kids, you had 50 additional families they're on a Friday night, then they're going to eat locally, they're going to stay locally, um, so hopefully it'll help the downtown. No, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. That's good. Okay, right. so um, the first motion then will, um, the Chair will entertain a motion to approve the field use agreement for the new turf field at the middle high school between the Georgetown Athletic Association and the Georgetown Public Schools as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion, further discussion of that? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the proposed donation agreement between the Georgetown Athletic Association and the town of Georgetown as presented. So moved. Second. All in uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and I do have those here that um, 
I'll have you guys sign now that we approved it. Um, one quick question. Are we giving yeah. you the check? We're we holding it for the selectmen on Monday night. Treasurer. Um, yeah, so oh. for Monday. Monday. Uh, Monday, and yeah, you'll be bringing it to the treasurer, I believe. Okay. Just you want a copy? Yeah, can I have a copy? Yep. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to come with like this big <laughs> check. <laughs> <laughs> well, it time. is a big check, but I meant <laughs> like a big check. Yeah. They can yeah. still make you smile. Yeah. No, I think that I think that's great. Poor Georgetown Savings Bank. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money to be taken out. But really, that is great, and we really appreciate all your effort, your time, and I'm looking forward to seeing that you're staying for the 10 to 15 years. Yeah. That just happened in the last few days as he well. Didn't really, he didn't really know. I kind of did. Yeah, we'll be, calling him from, we'll be calling him from Trestle Way to finish this agreement out. That's the way we're going here. No. Anyone else that? That's great. Sounds good to me. That's really nice. Thank you. Very cool. Cool. Thank you so much. That's great. Thank yeah, you. Thank so you. we'll see you on right. Monday. I'm Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your support. Okay. You guys have been great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's exciting. Very. Did you need me to sign the agreement, though? I didn't sign it yet, so I'm just wondering if that needs to be signed before I leave. Yes. Is that a yes? Yep. Oh, That's La Laura's a yes, so I go with Laura tells me what Laura to do. Laura knows. That was an afterthought. You need to, with, not sure if you both, with, yep. I don't know if we're both signatories on it. Well, it doesn't say, it just says Georgetown Athletic Associate. Yep, and then this one is you. That's the original. Okay, uh, superintendent's report. Um, school reports? Okay, we have um, Julie. Do you want to come on up? I'm hot as you finish running here. I don't think so. And I wear a lot of sleeves because it's always so cold and right. 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 I'm right. sweating. <laughs> oh, Margaret, sorry. Oh, she's on it, yeah. Margaret's always the she one. She has her coat with her. <laughs> I have a sweater I just don't know if I need it. I'm going to put on long sleeves because I'm always freezing at you. Thank you. Have a good night. Sorry. Has to be prepared for everything. Anything. Pass that along. Oh, thank you. I do. Thanks. Just so I don't lose that one. Oh, okay. You might think you need to sign this. Yes. Thank you. Okay. MCUs. MCUs. <laughs> got a chance to take Thank a look you. at um, yes. my okay. package for school committee. Uh, yes. We're very excited about this project. Well, this is the work of the vertical team. And uh, the ELA vertical team, as you know, has been working for about two years to try to align our units and determine exactly what materials we'll need and um, where our holes or our gaps may be, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are. And so, um, our vertical team for ELA is K to 12, and one of the things that, and you can obviously, hopefully you got a chance to read through, but the videos are really um, telling and, and enlightening, I would say, about the, the MCU project. Yes, I it's, watched it. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great video, and so, um, may, just to summarize it, uh, Race to the Top money, as when the state decided to sign on to Race to the Top funding came through for the alignment of curriculum, which is something that had never happened in the state of Massachusetts before. When we got our new standards in 1999 or in the year 2000, you know, the first rendition, um, every district went through, you know, its own kind of decision-making process in terms of how to curriculum, um, how to determine what curriculum would be. And so it looked different in each town, you know, in each city. and. Some towns had more resources than others, so you know it was kind of an interesting concept of, of in theory, but on the ground it was a lot of difficult work. I was on vertical teams back in those days, and we would spend uh, years just trying to figure out what the standard meant 
and um, you know which grade level did that really apply to and so that that was the long and involved process so when the new frameworks came out in 2011 um, part of that race to the top money along with those new frameworks was to create a um, cadre of teachers who would take a really close deep look at the standards and try to determine what types of lessons and units would make the most sense to to bridge English and social studies or English and science and reading and writing and and all those great things and so um, I was actually on the race to the top committee when I worked in a race to the top district I was on this committee but um, I, obviously I'm so happy that I'm here that was the one thing I had to give up when I left the district that I was in previously was um, my seat on that committee so I've always kind of you know watched and waited to see what the work would be um, as it came out and it took three years for them to make these units from start to finish and so um, a lot of hard work went into them and so that was one of the things that I kind of knew was happening but you know they hadn't been published when we got our frameworks and that was one of the unfortunate things um, just the way things happen you know that we've had the year of all years every initiative under the sun happening at the same time this year this was one of those things uh, where we you know we all had the frameworks but we didn't have the units yet so we're kind of working in that zone of knowing they're coming but not knowing what they were going to look like and so um, this year we took a really close look at what those those units consisted of and we compared them to our trajectories and the units that we teach in grades K to 12 and and so the units in the grid that I think are probably on page three or four I'm not sure how it's printed in your packet um, are the units that teachers decided they wanted to implement next year and so they supported um, the you know the places that we saw we needed to build up some strengths for our reading and writing and connecting across content areas and um, as you'll see the majority of the units are at the lower elementary so K 1 2 and 3 are, are really the most dense when it comes to incorporating new units um, 4 5 6 and up through high school it's a little bit different in the way that they're aligned but we did find some units there that we thought would be really helpful as well to incorporate up through the high school and so that's what you see in that grid so these were selected by our teachers our yes. vertical teams yeah and we did this during vertical team and then brought it to the staff during professional development days so it was you know a combination of you know kind of siphoning through and working through it during vertical teams and you know even in, obviously in your own time because if you looked at them they were very long uh, <laughs> so you know you really did have to do the reading and the looking and trying to connect how these would work as we were working through social studies time or science or ELA time or reading or writing time um, and so that that was a lot of the heavy lifting that the vertical teams did um, but when we brought it to the professional development to the teachers we explained the work that we had done and you know where we saw the need and and they worked through that as well and created their own trajectories for next year including these resources so it's been a long stretch but it's been great work so I couldn't be happier really than, than I am with this truly it's been fun I have to I always say it's fun it is fun well, maybe not for everyone but well, it's, <laughs> it's for me <laughs> So I love the fact that they're, they're, they're focused more on content in that sense, so you get a, a deeper sense of what the social studies is asking for when you take a look, for instance, at civil rights in grade two. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily think that's something we would focus on. But when you look at the social studies standards for grade two and you look at the ways that you can incorporate that through ELA and reading and writing, you see a very natural connection. And so um, it's pretty exciting for us to to work on these and to um, put them into our work for next year. I just have a question for you uh, under the high school where the asterisk is, which indicates that it's under dis uh, district review. So the teacher and student guide for writing research papers. Yes. Um, I just recall meetings in the past that we were, um, we wanted to see our kids writing more, better. Mm -hmm. Well, more, but also better, better. Mm -hmm. and that was more in like the middle school this is a deeper level of that we okay. have in fifth grade for example the new ELA frameworks calls for direct citation usage so okay. from fifth grade on we're teaching students how to use direct citation and what that means what it looks like how do you use it in an MLA format 
and then how to use it across content. So this is something that we're working on between ELA and social studies at the high school, and that's why it's under review by the department heads trying to determine what, um, what are the specifics for high school writing versus middle school writing, mm -hmm. and then how are the different content areas going to incorporate these rules for the road of writing when it comes to writing research, because believe it or not, it does look different sometimes in social studies than it may in, in science, and so we want to get a sense of we're all asking for the right things and the same things across the high school level. Mm -hmm. But it definitely does start in middle school, absolutely. So fifth grade, you're saying that we, um, the citations are, that's when it's introduced to the kids? Yes, with the new frameworks, yes. That's when it, it will be, especially next year, especially with the incorporation of the fifth grade units that, mm -hmm. you, that we've chosen. So fifth grade and on fifth grade is more of the um, introductory and the like laying the groundwork for what direct citation looks like and how to use it. And then it's a skill that's built up over time so that when students are in high school, it's a natural, mm -hmm. it's a natural piece of work that they would use to incorporate citation. But now we're talking about embedding deeper pieces of content within that. And so that's why we're looking at social studies and science, especially to figure out how can we make sure that the ELA is speaking to the science and we're all, we're all asking kids the same right. things. Well, the website that the kids use for the citations, mm -hmm. which I don't know it off the top of my head, I should. Probably the easy, easy bibs or no, Noodle bibs. No, that's what it is. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you just input Put the, it in and it does it for you. It does it for you. You input the um, name of the the author, and then right. the, the article and that you use. Right. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. formats it into mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, uh, all this that didn't we exist when we were in school <laughs> <laughs> is now there for everyone. Yeah. And yeah. no, you didn't use any. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Yeah, so it's easy. So, I was always nervous, so. honestly, in my, you know, when you're doing your research, it's like you're, you get so nervous about putting it out there, you know, and having it come back the wrong way that you, painstakingly go through it yourself. <laughs> right. Well, with the plagiarism things that have come up yeah. over the yeah. last uh, like couple of weeks, it just seems to yeah, it's you know, you're always like, oh my goodness, did I, did say I cite that? <laughs> Yeah. Exactly, I, yeah. and that's that's a natural question, especially I think for middle and high school kids to have. You know, did I cite that? Did yeah. I do that properly? Um, you know, how can how can we help kids to know mm -hmm. what the proper ways are for that? Right, and things they can and can't do. And I think plagiarism. Yeah. The kids, if they see it on the news, they start to. I know my kids have asked me, so what is, what's what is that? And, Oh, we can't do that? I'm like, no, you can't just take some analysis unless you cite them. But you yeah. also have to just teach them that. So it's easy to cite, and this is how we yep. do it. You yep. know, and, and then whenever you're in doubt, here are the different um, roads that you can take for citation. And I think that's kind of sometimes a mystery. Um, and so we want to make that more clear. It must be a lot Thanks. easier to accidentally plagiarize these days than it was it's when I was writing. So much more information. If I wrote on there. a topic, I mean, it might not be right. that easy for me to find different. Sources, but now yeah, just now Google, it's so easy. Like, you know, yeah. Ask the question. Least, there it is. You had to type it in yourself instead of just copy and paste. It. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go into my group, which is what I was. Oh, we just need to <laughs> yeah, teach that. them, you know, the best. Right, the right. right. And so I do like the frameworks for that reason too, because it made that clear. Um, you know, when should you start to introduce direct citation work, and what does it look like? Right. So I'm happy with that. Now, so assuming all goes well, and we implement these model curriculum units, and mm -hmm. the teachers like them, what would what would the future look like over the next few years? Would we be taking more model curriculum units from this? Well, I from the, the they, honestly the the state is only coming out with about a hundred of them. Okay. Um, and so what we've done though, as you know, through our literacy specialists, we've downloaded the template that they, we use our, the same template in Atlas, our curriculum management system that we own in the district. Right. Um, but they have a workable template that they offer up to districts to use so that you can use this template and, and kind of process your own work through it. And so when we look at new science standards, for instance, when the state identifies what the science standards will be when they adopt them, yes, we'll be able to, because they certainly be won't come out with 100 science units for us. Their feet on science, I think so. On. <laughs> we'll be able to use that type of um, methodology to help us construct science units when we get to that point. Okay. And is, are they project-based? Are they, and they're all, the teachers are satisfied that they're teaching content and skill and 
instructional strategy work. And dialogue and, and discussion and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I'll certainly give you updates over the course of the year, let you know, you know how yeah. things are going and you know, um, show you some, hopefully show you some work. Um, but I think you'll be happy with what you see. But now you need us to approve but some money a, for you to spend. Now I need a little bit of money yes. <laughs> <laughs> to make that happen. Well, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> let's give Julie her money. Okay. And this will Good. be coming from the school choice. Right. Um, okay. The chair okay. will entertain a motion to approve the spending of $20,000 from the school choice revolving account to purchase curriculum materials as recommended by Dr. Julie DeRoche. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We look forward to uh, to seeing. Oh, definitely. Yes. Nice with it. We'll come and get updates for sure. Yeah, great. Thanks, Thanks ladies. I love those Thank vertical you. teams. I do too. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have to um, approve the contracts. You don't have to vote on it. You just had to sign it. Yep. Did we, did we already voted on it? Yeah. Right? When we came yeah. out of negotiations, yeah. Okay. You voted so on the tentative agreement. Then yeah. I integrated the contract so we have one document. Now. That's uh, that's great. So they are all. She's, and I think they're signed. Oh, yeah. Right. These are mine. Okay. Do you have both I gave you the original. Oh, we're missing one. You have one? Do you have the other one? I might. Um, I know I don't. Financial report? I shouldn't say no, that. Something you just signed. So then I just signed. If I sign something, I. Okay. No, nope, PM doesn't have it. I do. Turned it over. Okay. Okay. Whatever you. Okay. Okay. You sign it. You guys okay. have to sign that again. Okay. Sign this one. Okay. Okay. And the. Oh, okay. So, so they need to sign it. Yes. Okay. Back it goes. Okay, before I go on to the financial report, if I could, yep. I just wanted to, um, the in the packet, we had Georgetown record, from the Georgetown record, we had former students, uh, kind of like an update on, you know, former yes. students at Georgetown. And I just, didn't, I was so happy to see it because when I was looking through the record in this particular, uh, it was June 27th edition, I was going through that and it was so nice to see an update. It just seems like once the kids either leave uh, when they graduate, you, you don't know, you know what they're doing anymore. It's like they just, you know they go off to college and do great things, but this, the, the record actually um, keeps up with them. It helps us to It, it does. Yeah, it keeps up with them. So I just wanted to take a few minutes just to talk about uh, what some of our kids have done. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, Eric Leal, L-O-E-H-L-E. -L -E -E. So he was a Bishop Fenwick um, High School graduate, Georgetown resident, uh, and he was one of 12 students to be awarded four full year, full tuition scholarships to BU. So I think that was, that's wow. amazing. So my congratulations to him and his family. Um, St. John's Prep, they also give out a prestigious award, uh, the St. Francis Xavier Merit Scholarship. Three eighth grade students received that, which will give them um, money towards their years at mm -hmm. St. John's. So mm -hmm. Alex Kozchusik, Wesley Miles, and Jack Trapani are all, have all been awarded that um, prestigious scholarship. So good luck to them. We'll miss them, but good luck. I think they're, they're going to do a great job. Uh, Jane Erlinson, um, Mark and Gail Erlinson are her parents. She was uh, named to the Dean's List for the 2014 semester at St. Michael's College. Uh, congratulations to her. We also have Molly Lorenz of Georgetown was named to the Dean's List at the University of New Haven. Um, Megan Fippen, Georgetown graduate from, graduated from Union College and uh, she is now a proud owner of an arts major. Uh, graduated magna cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts degree, so good luck to her. Ryan Flynn, uh, Stonehill College's Spring 2014 Dean's List. Uh, Paige Bowden, Dean's List for Fitchburg State. Uh, Shannon Burke, she was a graduate of Phillips 
uh, Academy of Georgetown resident, and she graduated uh, magna cum laude from Bucknell University. That's my um, alma mater. Really? Yes. Okay. So she'll do wonderful things. Katerina Bongiorni, uh, her mom is a teacher in the school system, uh, and she graduated from the University of Hartford uh, with a Bachelor of Music, music degree. So good luck to her. And am I missing anybody here that I, I don't want to miss anybody? Um, did you John, get Clarkson University yeah, in Georgetown? John, was that John, John Foster? Foster. Yes. Right. Junior majoring in engineering and management. He was named to the dean's list for the spring 2014 semester at Clarkson University. Um, and then I just wanted to... to um, and then there's some graduates. Sarah Harker? No. Oh, Sarah Hawker of Georgetown, degree from Clark University on Sunday, May 18th. Okay, so she has a Bachelor of Arts. Yes. It, it's just amazing to me, and I love that the record and I does know this. Sarah, she lives on my street. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah, it's just nice to see that I know the kids are doing so well. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure their families they, are very proud. And Mike Messman, I, I thought this was a great article because I never, I don't know Mike personally, I know his, his parents. I didn't know of him to be a volleyball player. So as I was reading the article, it was saying that he was always a basketball player. And then he just started volleyball. A couple of his friends said to, you know, try it out. And he did great. And he um, won the Rudy Award at Elmira New York College for his role as an instrumental leader and surprise contributor as a senior for the men's volleyball team. Yeah, so I thought yeah. that was a really um, cool article. And the bottom of that page of Mike Messman um, was the 12-year-old the kids in Georgetown won the Lighthouse um, Trophy in the New England Baseball League um, tournament. And I was very proud of all those kids, and my son Dominic was one of them. So <laughs> I don't necessarily know that that was supposed to be part of it. I think it was just Mike, and these kids happened to be on the bottom. But but that was um, a great accomplishment for these little ones. The West so Newberry tournament too. Didn't our U twelve team win West Newberry tournament? They did. Is that different? That's different. Well, I don't know if it's official that they they're they're going they're moving forward with it. I don't know if it's we official. We have a, a lot of great athletic talent, and the we GAA do. helps them develop their, right. all their skills. That's right. It's they a wonderful do. Thing. So, <laughs> congratulations to all these families and all the kids. Yes. Um, I think it's wonderful that they've all done so well. Yes. So thanks for letting me take that time. Now we'll go on to the um, financial report, which is usually not my favorite part of the meeting. Uh, so the first thing in the uh, finance section is the final budget report for FY14. Um, mm -hmm. Just an updated version here. Right. No, it's, no, it's just this. It's just in the packet. Yeah, it's just okay, it's my packet. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know I saw this. I didn't know I saw this. Yeah. So um, we ended the year uh, with a special education deficit light, uh, lower than I had originally projected mm -hmm. at the last meeting, which I was around 180 up to 200. Um, it came in at 113,947. Um, but we were much higher than I originally projected in our um, long-term substitute line. We ended the year um, overspent by $62,000. So that was, you know, I've been telling you all year, we had a lot of maternity leaves, we had a couple long-term illnesses. Mm. So um, the good news is that we're balanced, and the good news is that we only hit circuit breaker for an additional $52,000. We budgeted 300 in our budget, so we ended up, because we had the budget freeze, we ended up hitting circuit breaker for $52,000 more than we had originally thought. Um, Can you remind me when the budget freeze was? Uh, October. <laughs> it was that early? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was thinking it was like around Christmas. That was, then... that was my first year here. Okay. And then, oh my God, it was, okay. Yeah, that's early. Well, the, the special all director like... was getting all kinds of hit with all kinds of things, so we wanted, yeah. we have to balance. No, I know. So, um, so anyways, uh, you know, we're going to try uh, to do it a little bit different um, uh, this coming fiscal year at my office and I, where we're going to hit circuit breaker right away for the 300000 We budgeted 300 again. So we're going to hit circuit breaker right away with tuitions that we know will total the 300 so that we'll have a much better, uh, we'll have a much more accurate line every month or every quarter in the budget report. The mm -hmm. issue is, 
if you end up with money, then you, we're reversing all our transactions at the end of the year, which is difficult for my staff. But it, we feel more comfortable doing that because I think it gives you a truer picture and the budget freeze may not go into place as early. I'm sure we'll have one at some point, that but hopefully it won't be so early. I'm wondering next year. Right. When projections right. so well we we're carrying over 277 in circuit breaker we uh we received more than we budgeted because we had the extraordinary relief i'm sure we don't have our number yet but we're going to get more than we budgeted 315 i think for next year and i'm sure you're going to be higher based upon your placement you had this year so it, so we'll know better what we'll have for circuit breaker i think this number comes out in september mm -hmm. so um Anyway, we balanced and it, we all survived it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say about the long-term sub account because we already have leaves. Margaret has leaves right away as soon as the year starts. <laughs> because I've had a busy summer. Put it that way. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> so she's already done a lot of hiring because she, we know about the leaves already. So yeah, sixty-two thousand. That over. Is, yeah, I know. That's. Quite a difference so right because we budgeted we upped the budget to 30 because we were over and we spent 92 hmm. so yeah but. and you already know that we're having some some paid on. leaves like there's there's maternity leaves or child rearing leaves that are coming up this this current school year that the person is taking the whole year off. Okay. So that doesn't cost us anything because we need to pay somebody anyways. But the ones that cost are the ones that are eligible to take eight or 12 weeks. Right. Well, they take 12 weeks typically, and according to their contract, we pay them for eight weeks. So we pay them for eight weeks, then we pay the sub. The sub. Yes. And then we had medical uh, leaves of absences, and we had some sick leave bank. That all was charged to that line. So. Mm. At least I mean, there's an explanation for it. My goal is not to have a budget freeze so early next year. Yeah, but when we say budget freeze, I mean, it, you, you were very, dis it was at your discretion. Carol and I both. Yeah. And if, if I perhaps said no to something, the principal could still appeal it to Carol and she mm -hmm. could overrule it. And all they had to do was say, you know, we didn't want people stockpiling paper when we, did, we couldn't afford it this year. Do you know what I mean? And right. They get nervous and they, and they stockpile things and... If, but if they had a real need in curriculum or technology, they were allowed to spend their budget. But did it get to the point where we couldn't um, do like printer cartridges and stuff? Because one year it did get to that. Yeah, I, I don't know if you remember that. To get anything we needed, yes. I mean, yeah, you were good about if you need something for curriculum, or we always were able to get what we right. needed. Yeah. So. I will say this year for ordering, I'm trying to be a little conservative for Pembroke just because. We don't want to be moving a lot, mm. knowing it, sure. you know, we're, we're trying to be conservative. If, if we have to come back to ask for money for paper, I'd rather do it that way than to have so much that, you know, it's hard to move at the end of the year. So. Yeah, we'd rather not have to move anything. Right. Yeah. Use up the <laughs> mm. so, so that's that, unless anybody has any questions. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. The next is... Um, Approval of the BSC invoice, and this was for the third party review of yes. the wetlands for from the, the Conservation Commission for the turf project. Right, mm -hmm. and this was um, total due. So it's just the it's two the thousand. Two, it's yeah, twenty two fifty eight ninety six. Okay, where do you want me to sign this? You anywhere can, on you it? You can sign it anywhere. I'll have to have you end up come in and sign the warrant anyways, but you can just sign it. Just in. anywhere is fine with that. Okay. So, um, the amount of, okay, 2002, so that was for the third party reviewer yep. from the right. Conservation Commission. Yep. Um, she didn't write a, a motion or anything, did she? I think, no. did you? No, I didn't, I put them on my other documents. Okay, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve invoice number 912-1733 dated July 3rd, 2014 from BSC Group in the amount of $2,258.96 for the third party reviewer for the turf field at the Georgetown Middle High School as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. The next invoice is a Gail invoice. The total's on the back. 
Okay, the seventeen thousand. Yeah. Okay. So this is for. This is for the top hat uh, for the uh, three thousand two hundred twelve dollars is for their regular, you know, work that they design work that they did. Yep. And then for change orders, change order three, change order four, and change order five. Okay, so that includes uh, geotechnical borings, any minus sixty nine hundred. Yep. Um, additional design services, which is change order four in the amount of $6,800. Change order five is additional meetings, so meetings that we had agreed to pay uh, Gale Associates for coming out um, if we had any questions. So the um, total is $17,682.17. Um, the chair will entertain a motion to approve Invoice number 1406320, dated July 16th, 2014, from Gale Associates in the amount of $17,682.17 um, as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Hi. Let me just sign this. Okay, yeah, I'm this not going to end up doing the same thing, but okay. I'll have that okay. as backup. Uh, Pearly Roof Design Service Contract Award is not ready yet, Thank so you. that may have to wait. Um, okay, so that's something that you're working on. Right, it's been going back. And we've, got a, we've got a design uh, firm that we've selected through the bidding process, yep. but the town attorney and the architect's attorney are getting, getting the legalese done. Okay, and just to clarify, that isn't for a full roof replacement, it's to, it's to replace, replace certain uh, I think number. 200 um, slate tiles and then do the corner work, oh, the woodwork. Um, okay. The next is the general contractor approval for the turf project. Now that was what was in front of you when you came tonight that mm -hmm. Laura had put on the table. There's, uh, there's three documents. There's uh, the uh, tabulation form for the from the bid opening, a memo from Gail with the recommend. You know they did all the reference checks and uh, they they highlighted in this document here, and this is to uh, the school committee should be taking. I don't think there's a motion written for this either, Barbie. But okay. Would be to um, award the turf field uh, general contract to Quirk Construction. And then the contract will have to be worked out. And again, the Board of Selectmen will have to approve the two other agreements at their meeting on Monday night and the bond, bond approval. So um, so the, the Board of Selectmen, so we approve the um, contractor. Right. That's not something that goes to no, the Mike Farrell said that this is a com school committee project, so you'll be signing as the chair the, okay. the contract. But by you taking a vote tonight and awarding it to the general contract to the lowest qualified bidder, mm -hmm. um, that will let the lawyers begin to draw up the contracts. Mm -hmm. And so once the Board of Selectmen Monday night approves the agreements, moves forward on the bond, we'll be able to sign the contract so they can start the project. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for um, supplying this to tonight. Yeah, that came from Gail. Yeah, this was this is yes. interesting yeah. um, information. Absolutely. Okay, so um, do we want any discussion on this before um, I make a motion to approve the contractor? I know you don't have, have haven't had time to really take a look at it, but that is the that is the role of the architect that in this in this project we don't have an own project manager, so they fill in that uh, need at the bid opening, the architect, someone from Lindsay's office did all the bid openings, it was all done in the public, um, following all the laws and, and that's what produced this bid tabulation form and they did a lot of investigation, they've worked um, with them, I think they've worked with them before yeah, or they've, so yeah, so you know, they did, they did due diligence. So yeah, and the bid opening was just last Friday. So we're trying to get right. right. Yeah. We're trying to move fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. fast. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to um, award award the bid for the Georgetown Middle High School turf field project to the general contractor Quirk 
that's our actual R. Is that it? Work. Construction. Construction. One Martel Way, Georgetown, Mass. Um, as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So this project is moving along. Yeah. Very well. Very excited. Okay. okay. So I think well, we have a lease agreement. Yeah. So I have a memo um, attached to two documents. Uh, or three documents, uh, mm -hmm. a Dell lease, an Apple lease, and a, um, a lease from Cameron office uh, for our copy machine. The first, the first lease on the um, memo is a Dell three-year lease to purchase um, 23 uh, desktop computers to replace the current lab at the middle high school. These funds were approved uh, through the budget process. If you remember, we kept that lease purchase line at 48000 and we put it at the high school knowing that he needed to replace equipment. Um, so this was, this was in mind, and Peter had put this forward before during the budget season. So that's the first one, so that's in the budget. I'll quickly go through these, and then if you have any questions, you can ask me. The second um, lease is a three-year Apple computer lease to purchase 85 MacBook Air laptops to furnish each professional staff member with a laptop replace, to replace outdated desktop computers at the middle high school. So when I asked Peter how old these co desktop computers were, he said they were Pentiums. Half of them were donated and most don't work. So yeah. there was and, a real like, need. <laughs> and the software, like you can't, you know, you can't use it. Right? So unfortunately, uh, and I will say that our new uh, uh, director of technology uh, reviewed these with Peter and tried to fit the Apple lease into our budget and was unable to do so because if we wanted to go through the budget, you know, to, to stay within the budget, we would have had to have a four-year lease. To have a four-year lease, it has to go on the town meeting warrant. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have been able to do anything till November. Mm -hmm. So we asked him to go back and ask Apple, what would it cost annually for three years so, as it says in the memo, we can fit most of it in our budget, but 5,600 of it would have to come out of choice. And that would be, unless we increase our budget next year in the budget process, that would have to be considered every year when we talk about choice, that we'd be committed for $5,600 for the three years of this purchase. Hmm. So, um, and the last one is, uh, we had to replace the uh, copy machine in the superintendent's office, came off lease, so we just... We, we have all uh, Konica machines except ours was a Rico. It happened before me and I have no idea why. We wouldn't just stay with all one kind of machine. So we did, we went and got a Konica uh, machine. So it's in the budget, it's just um, because it's a three year lease, school committee has to approve it. Okay, okay and they all have to be all, all separate. Separate, right, okay. because I have to give the minutes to each of the three lease companies okay. that you approved it. Thank you for putting these ones out. Okay, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve the three-year lease to Dell Computers in the total of twenty-five thousand eight hundred and eleven dollars and sixty-two cents, with annual payments of eight thousand six hundred and three dollars and fifty-four cents, as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the three-year lease to Apple Inc. in the total of seventy-eight thousand nine hundred and sixty-five dollars with three annual payments of $27,783.39, utilizing 5623.30 of school choice funds for each of the three years, as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And the chair will entertain a motion to approve the three-year lease to CIT finance in the total of $11,300.40, with three annual payments of $3,000. Seven hundred and sixty-six dollars and eighty cents, as presented. Second discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't believe we have any subcommittee reports. Um, no, right. Not 
When was our last school committee meeting? It was before the 26th. July. Right. It was the last day. You had a meeting? Yes, there was a school building. Oh, yes. school building. Okay. Yeah. Great. I, I love your notes. She takes. Thanks. Well, yeah, I'm so tell us it. what's going on with the new Definitely building. Exciting. I go by there every day. Remember. It, it's very exciting. I liked it better when I would go by once, like once a month because I'd see things and I'm like, all right, it looks the same. But even though I know <laughs> things are moving along because it's, it's more inside. Yes. Right. We went there today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they started painting. Oh, they did? Wow. Well, I guess we should, we should talk about the, the school committee went and did the tour. Mm -hmm. When was that? That was, um, that was... That was before yeah, the building committee. Yeah, was that, that, was that, the, was that was the same, same day as the building night. committee. Yeah, meeting. No, okay. went, it was the yeah. same night as the building committee because you yeah. met after us. Yeah. After the tour. Very well, we exciting. had another school building committee. Okay. Yeah. Well, the tour, was, yeah. the tour was the same night as the school building committee. And the tour, it was amazing to go in there and see. Like, it was so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, and you could just, you could, you know, see the rooms and you could, see, it, it looks fabulous and right. people are so excited. Very yeah, bright, yeah. lots of great windows. Yeah. That library, I was telling everybody it's that. It's amazing. Like, on Facebook, it's got, got the pictures on Facebook, got 900 and something oh, views. Good. That's more, that's yeah. far more well, than So did you put them on Facebook? The, yes. You put them nice. Yes. Oh, good. It's ever been viewed on Facebook before. People <laughs> really wanted to see that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's that's wonderful. It's exciting. And my son and I, we went to uh, University of Rhode Island just to look at it, just to visit the school. And they have a building going up that's also due to be completed and, and started by September of 2015. Oh, nice. It was so far behind us. I mean, it was just the frame. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, two guys are like, <laughs> behind. <laughs> we're like, we're doing better. We're on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to make our, our deadline. I hope so. Yeah, okay. well, we're actually we're we're ahead, ahead of right. time. Yes, we're going to Right, I'm sure yes. you'll tell us that. Okay, so how, how yes, did the but. school building meeting go? Um, the school, it was, it, it went. Um, let's see. So we, <laughs> we started with the Georgetown Middle High School project, and we discussed the timeline of the construction again. Um, so the, time, the construction will start during the April vacation of 2015. Um, work on the gymnasium is going to begin then and we'll finish by the end of September at the latest. Uh, most of the work is gonna be done during the summer. Um, everything in the school will be done by the end of September except for the strip of rooms vacated by the sixth grade. So those and those particular rooms will be done at the end of November. Um, let's see, at the next meeting on August 12th, we're gonna have a fa phasing plan timeline. We're going to go out to bid in January and February of 2015. Um, there was consensus that the acid drums that are underneath somewhere really need to go because we don't use acid anymore in science. They were part Correct. of some old curriculum or something, so they there need to go. Yeah. Um, we're, we're reviewing the roof drains at this time for repair and replacement. Um, and I believe at the next meeting there might be some agenda items that uh, Mr. Lucia should be there for. That's what the chairs. August 12th, they would like him to be at that one. Um, then we moved on to the Pembroke meeting. Uh, the big push right now is the north field work, including the septic and the gas main work. Uh, framing construction is running, uh, framing construction runs bottom to top, but finished work runs top to bottom. So that's the way it's going. So all the uh, interior is going top to bottom. Uh, vote was, a vote was taken, and this is a very, very close vote, um, regarding the sod placement over the septic system. And the vote was 4-4. Four, four. And um, there, were, there was a lot of discussion. It went on that this is, I think this is probably primarily the reason for the, the meeting. Um, I voted for the to have the sod, and a lot of people, you know, just um, there were there were many reasons. Um, you know, we want the kids to be able to get out for recess next year. Um, right, and the, the, what would the time frame be if you don't use the sod? If we well see that that's kind of so no decision was reached. For them, or? A decision was reached. Yes, actually, the four four means that we will not be getting the sod. There was discouragement. I believe the sod has been purchased in this town in the past, and despite all good intentions, it just dies. 
And so there was fear that so thirty thousand dollars was going to be for nothing for the kids. Um, well, so if we don't do sod, we do seed. Um, there is some, uh, you know, there. We need to look more into exactly what that would mean. Whether the kids could get out. It's a possibility, probability that students could use the seeded grass in the spring of 2015 for recess. So they won't have recess outside in the fall. Well, I don't saying. think that's official. No, I mean, is that there, there's there's well, a lot because no, I know Carol no, and I had really a decided, Carol and I right. have had a conversation with, and I'm sure you've had plenty of conversations about it. Um, well, I, I think I think the we won't be having playground on that field right. with with sod. So then it's back to what do we do, you know, anywhere else? So we have not finished that conversation. Right. The only conversation that's been finished is is, the, is that field. Sod. Right. But we really um, need, un unfortunately, we not, really need to find a place for these kids to enjoy the recess. I'm, I know I'm not saying anything to you that you haven't heard so many times, but it's just, it's I don't very know, difficult. I, even just okay. going there and seeing the kids, it just, <laughs> I don't know, I just, I, I feel bad okay. that they're just where they are and it just doesn't look like it's just, they're enjoying themselves as much as they would be. I just really yeah. wish so that we could put our heads together and just find a place for them to go out in a in a grassy area. And that will happen. They just need a bigger area to run. Yeah, I think everyone would be happy. The teachers yeah. will be yeah. happier. Um, the parents will be happier. Is there? I mean, it's just. Is there, um, money budgeted each year for playground equipment so for instance jump ropes balls those kinds of things Not budgeted money um, at pearly last year just because of the winter that we had children were inside um, much you know they were inside so much last year we did buy other equipment and then um, I do replenish outside equipment so we bought some additional things for them to use outside as well so I can certainly do that at Penbrook um, but it doesn't, it doesn't solve all the problems. No. I think we do need to look at the area because yeah. where they are right now, it was a very, it's a very confined area. You know, the, the, as you know, the driveway is blocked off, so they're really just right. milling around you know, a small area. Um, but in years past, the PTA has been very generous with Pembroke and working yeah. with Mr. Walsh, and I know private donations, um, yeah. I know parents have gone to Mr. Walsh and he has provided them with uh, you know a, a catalog that he uses and they have pretty much just said give me a wish list right yeah you know yeah you know and I, and I do and so. think about that if um, again I have to I know this budget issues we have to look at that <laughs> but if there were um, if there were adults at recess who did more guided games, who led the children, and again, not, I'm not, you know, this isn't a criticism, just in, in the past, recesses, typically kids go out and they do whatever they want. But when they're limited, sometimes you have to, you know, provide the activity for them. So if we had maybe more structured games that would provide something for them to do and provides that physical activity, you know, I'm thinking that that might also be something to look at. So, yeah, we, we haven't finished the conversation by any means. I mean, you were there at the right. meeting, and you know, it was a very... Yeah. Well, and, and you know, because in, in fairness to those who voted against it, their feeling is it's a lot of money to spend for a very short period of time, mm -hmm. especially because if they go on it, they're going to ruin it. So now it really is money down the drain. So and it was in an area that's over a septic system, so you can't have irrigation. Right, it's over the right. new septic system. It's right, over the new yeah. septic system. So how much money do you have? Um, do you it, have it, that amount? It was it was thirty thousand. It was thirty thousand dollars for sod. Right, and if you didn't keep the the students off it for a certain period of time, the warranty's gone on it, and it really, there were many people at the table that said, "You're just going to throw money away." That's mm -hmm. basically what they said. And then looking at the seeded grass, I mean, I, I've done some research on seeded grass, and you know, there's some people that say you need to stay off it for a year, yeah, but, no, that's what I always thought. but that's not necessarily the case. And then you can reseed in the summer, and it can avoid some warranties, but it gets complicated. Yeah. It gets complicated. Mm -hmm. But that's the sad news that I, you know. 
do not like to deliver, but I have to. Um, the, there's an up, there was an update on security technology, proprietary systems, consistent with what we have. Uh, so we're planning out on the, all the security technology that, that's happening right now. And, um, and there was just a vote to take an extended contract with BTS, a quality control uh, testing agency regarding concrete and steel structures, which passed unanimously. Okay. That did not generate a lot of conversation. So that's it. Okay. So August 12th is your next meeting. Right. And um, anybody else have any subcommittee news reports? So I'll just go on um, <laughs> to CPAC. Not that there has been a CPAC meeting. <laughs> Um, but I, I just wanted to encourage people to check out uh, all the new information on the Special Education Department website. Um, there is a lot of great information out there to inform parents and, and help uh, community uh, members. You get, there's contacts, there's a new um, excellent uh, summary description of our special education programs. It's the program's overview. There's also an overview describing regulations for the least restrictive environment, staffing and grouping, plus a little bit on how the IEP process works. There's parents' notice of procedural safeguards and links to the Georgetown CPAC website and blog. So there really is a lot new there on, on our district website. Um, and I, have you seen, a, is there a, a, a schedule for CPAC meetings for the coming year? Have you seen that? Um, no, Shelby and I will be meeting and contacting you if you'd like to join us to put that together. Sure. And it'll go out with the um, welcome letter I send out to parents. Right. So that will come out either at the end of August or the beginning of September or mm -hmm. something like that. And that will also go up on the CPAC website, the CPAC blog, which will be available in turn through the district website, the Special Education right. Department page. So Absolutely. Um, and then in public relations, we have um, Michael and I have an upcoming meeting on Wednesday, August 6th at 9 a.m. And the agenda includes the Facebook and blog updates. Mm -hmm. And that'll be your first. That will be my first. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> 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 it'll, be, it'll be great. Did you say he will need it? He will need oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a good time. <laughs> good luck with that. Okay, thank you for all those updates. Um, okay, we're going to talk about the um, choice. school choice kindergarten for the upcoming school year. Margaret, do you want to come up? Sure, we have to. So the last time we talked to you, we really didn't have an idea. A now we have a better handle of yes. what we're looking at. To date, we have 74 students. I think in your packet it says 75. And then today, um, a family that was planning to move to Georgetown, their house fell through, so they're not going to be moving. Okay. So we lost a student today. So there are um, 15 in most classes. One has 13. So we certainly have the space for school choice. <coughs> so I did recommend opening 10. Um, and then that still leaves plenty of room for families, you know, that move in. So, because you know, that's always the gamble. When why I waited until July to make that decision, because we could have ten children move in to town, and we want to make sure, obviously, the Georgetown families are registered first. But at this point, um, we're in almost into August. Even if we have ten children, it still puts the classes up to 1920. So. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable opening it up for 10. That's great. Yeah, that is good. Okay. So um, we have 74. And um, so you would then put this in the paper? Then it gets it. posted. Um, and we have been receiving applications for school choice. A lot of times parents will just apply and then they wait to see if slot opens up or not. So um, I think I don't, there were six or seven the last time I knew, but then it will get posted and then it gives about a week for families to respond to that. And then if there are more than 10, there's a lottery. Right, okay. There are 10 now, so. Oh, you already have 10? We have it's posted not again. posted? Tomorrow. It'll be in tomorrow's paper, and then what's the deadline? What's the deadline? 
want that place to be in. August 11th. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yeah. and yeah. then we'll, we'll fill, obviously. For yeah, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's a good thing, right? Yes. And then if you then have the lottery. So when was the lottery? Oh, the deadline date. So you'll Two do. Two o'clock, yeah. It says if the, if in the notes, it says it's also the, 10. Yeah, mm -hmm. that they'll have the lottery at 2 o'clock. So you only have 10 before. That's great. Mm -hmm. okay. Does preference go to faculty members? They're, they're just added to the lottery. Lottery. Because like they're, they're, the okay. they're school choice. Yeah. So, hmm. so we'll generate $50,000 worth of revenue. So <laughs> that's why we'll take it. I'm happy. <laughs> that's great. Well, I'm so happy because the, recess, recess the school, so the class size is still, <laughs> still yeah. manage. It, it's still, it, it's actually great. I'm happy with the class size. Yes. It, it is, still is. Uh, last year, the classes were, they were large. Kindergarten classes were large last year. And every, you know, there's nothing to have been done. So this will be very nice. I say it's one fewer group of children that you're, you know, working with individually mm -hmm. during the day. So it will make a big difference. I do notice a lot of houses, though, up. For sale. For sale. In Georgetown. Everywhere, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, this time of year. So my, my right. concern just is that we don't get like an influx of kindergartens. Right. And with new developments, you know, you just never know. Right. What's the target number on, on classroom size? Well, I'd, we haven't, we don't have an official target, but I think in most circles you want to aim for about 20. It is, okay. Um, 20 and under is a good size. Um, anything over that, again, it's doable. You. And certainly if you go elsewhere and talk to right. teachers in other communities when they have many more children in their class, you know, we're lucky to have that. But, you know, that's, that's the number I would like to shoot for. So that still leaves the ability for, you know, 15 mm -hmm. other 10, 15, families yeah. to move in. So Yeah. So and the odds that they have kindergartners probably. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the opening of 10 kindergarten seats through the school choice program for the 2014-2015 school year. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Turfield phase two. This, we talked with Carol about this. We talked about it at a previous meeting, but we never took a formal vote on it. Yeah, why didn't we take it? Do you remember why we didn't take a vote? Because we talked about it. I wasn't at that, I don't you think I was at, at that meeting. Yeah. Um, so this, do you guys recall? The phase two that we we talked about, in some reason we didn't do a um, a vote on it. So it's the uh, green sale environmental, um, along with Gail for the monitoring of the um, the soil. The soil a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Removal of the, of the mitigating of the soil. Mm -hmm. Well, so they would have um, an individual there. To monitor the um, the soil and make sure that what needs to be done with that soil gets done. Yes. Right. And, and phase two included green seal developing the bid specs for us to go out to the bid. So they did the work. They did the work. Yeah. They did the work. They did. They had to to write new specs mm -hmm. to have the yes. general contractor be able to yeah. remove the soil appropriately. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know why it wasn't approved, but I mean, it yeah, was certainly. We talked about it in, uh, in detail. Okay, so the um, chair will entertain a motion to approve the hiring of Green Seal Environmental to provide monitoring services at the Georgetown Middle High School during the construction phase of the turf field project. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And when we made all the appointments for the subcommittees um, and such, we did not. We failed to um, ask Laura if she wants to be the school committee secretary again. <laughs> so at, at this point, um, the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Laura Markarian as the school committee secretary for the 2014-2015 school year. Second. 
Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Laura. You have us again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all that you we do. We appreciate Thank you. everything you do. Okay. Um, the business textbooks and online subscription. This, I do have a question, but I think it's already been answered before the meeting. Okay. Did you have a chance to take a look at this business te textbook request? Yes. Excellent. I mean, business and marketing has always been one of our important strengths mm -hmm. in our high school curriculum. And um, you know, to keep to keep current and uh, to build on our strengths, uh, I think this makes a lot of sense. Mm. Business is one of those areas like technology that's just moving ahead so quickly all the time. Right, can't keep up with it. Okay. Um, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve the new textbook recommended introduction to business textbook and school to career online subscription by Glencoe as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm so hot right now. Are you? Not so hot. No. It'll be interesting to see how this, this online text six year subscription, you know, works for everybody, for the teachers and the students. Because I remember asking Peter once about you know, the wisdom of ordering new textbooks versus yeah, online. online. And you know, he meant he said that online you have to pay every year and it's you know sometimes it's better to have it hard copy, um, depending. So yeah, I'm a hard copy individual. Um, I, I, I always, even with yeah. Dr. Tana's newsletter, I was like the only person that still got it hard copy. I just like things like tangible that I can uh, put me, my me hands too. on, you know. Right. I don't know if the kids, kids these days might be in book club, I don't do Kindle, but. Oh, I am. A I mean, I, for a textbook, actually, if I were a student, I mean, personally, I would like both. I just like to have. Oh, both, is, both is good, Joe. Both is good. Okay, the Spanish. Um, I did have a question on that, but it was answered, which I was happy about from Carol before she left. Um, did anyone want to discuss this, talk about it? Any questions on it? I don't have any questions. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to approve the new textbook, AP Spanish Language and Culture Exam Preparation Text by Vista, Higher Learning as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think this, I think, I think Barbara, you went to the environmental field. monitoring. I think we were supposed to be approving the change order, which I think you kind of did, but then also the hiring of green sales for the monitoring. Right, I think we got okay. that. I don't know what the vote so actually yes. said. So, <laughs> well, two things regarding green sales. So we voted on the second one first. We got them confused is what we think. Well, because yes. it's all green seal. One is, it, one is approving, the first one was to approve the change order that you had already talked about. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that we could process the invoice. But that's second, not what we said. Right, right. So, so we that's probably that's should, go back, and, yeah, we should go, go back and yeah, go back and revote the term we didn't want at the top of that. Yeah. So can, can I just use this phase to approval? That's how it's been. Okay. Um, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the turf field phase two approval as presented. Approval. As presented. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, homeschool. Okay, we have a list 
to buy from the school. That wasn't in my packet. Oh, you didn't get it? No. It wasn't in my packet. That's okay. Did you want to take a look at it? Yeah, That's okay. I know. So that's just a list of the um, families that will be homeschooling their children for the upcoming school year. Mm -hmm. And does Dr. Strait, do you, do you monitor and, and all the assessments for all these students? And yes, there's a whole process sure that I ask them to follow, which is to include all the information that you see there. In addition to that, I ask them if they're going to submit a portfolio, which shows the student's work over the course of the year and all of the subject matter that's required, or they can go out and do a standardized assessment so I have something that I can compare. So for those students who have, say, have homeschooled last year, I don't give you their name until I've seen either a portfolio or the standard assessment, and then I will provide it to you for approval. And they also have, a, have to give me a detailed list of um, what the curriculums are going to be, who's going to do the instruction, what the qualifications are for that person. Mm -hmm. Don't detail that. It yeah. is detailed. Yeah, it's quite a process, I'm sure. It is. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve the list of homeschool students for the 2014-2015 school year as presented. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And we do have a, uh, did you have in your packet the staffing update? Yeah. You have yes. that? Yes. Okay. So all the open slots, I'm sure we're working diligently to fill those. Margaret has been. <laughs> busy hiring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is, is it going well? And how uh, were you thinking well. at the beginning of the school it's, year? It's like, it's the momentum. Yeah. It was starting slowly. It's all that, you know, it's the posting, it's the, then just hundreds of resumes that come in and then going through them. But, but now, now we're zipping along, you know, like um, we've interviewed, um, done some hiring, and um, I feel like it's, it's not done, but it's, it's under control. Are you receiving a lot of resumes? Oh, hundreds. Really? Wow. Hundreds. It's, um, wow. it's really amazing. Um, for assistant pair of positions, there are candidates with masters, there are candidates, I mean, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. So that makes Which, it so I mean, on the, the positive, there is wonderful talent and good teachers that we're bringing in, so that's the good news. But it's just, you know, there are a lot of people of mine. Okay, well, good luck with that. Thank you. We have the month of August. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to be here before you know it. I, I always say once it's August, it like goes so quickly. In about three hours. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, well, I believe that's everything on the agenda. So I appreciate you all hanging out with us. And um, <laughs> the meeting will adjourn at 8.59. Good night. Oh, Paul. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.